Armbrecht for the Devil's Puck Luck podcast, breaking down game number two. And in the early onset, just a much better performance from the Devils. They don't look as tentative. They certainly look a little bit more decisive. Had a sloppy turnover in their defensive zone early. Didn't result in anything. VTech showing a little bit more side-to-side -side attention here, closing over on the glove side post for a weak side shot there. And then ultimately what we want to see too, don't back down from the physicality. Danny mentioned don't lose your identity here, but after a nice stop from VTEC, bodies in front of the goal. Got to get physical. Dougie Hamilton getting shoved up over the backside of the goal here. Will not be surprised. We've seen this throughout the NHL playoffs here in the first round, but I'm not going to be shocked if someone drops gloves here to make a very clear message that the Devils are intending to have a long series fight with the Rangers, continuing to break things down as it unfolds throughout the first period. Early penalty by one of the new players inserted into the rotation. Smith, you want to call it a little bit light, doesn't matter. Ultimately, the Devils give up the first power play of the game to the Rangers and do a solid enough job to survive. Quite frankly, let's keep pounding home this message. Vitek Vanacek is really locked in to start this game. We asked coming out of game number one, where yes, there were a lot of issues throughout the team, but Vitek flat out did not look like he was dialed in on a consistent basis already early in this one, facing a lot of shots of Panarin, wide open power play opportunity from the left side is there, deflects it away. Again, shot coming in from the right, bottles it up, holds it, does not afford the opportunity for a rebound. Something that Shesterkin did a great job in game number one, not allowing those second chance opportunities, not allowing the loose pucks in front of him to create chances for the Devils. Now we're seeing game two, VTech locked in, looking to hold on here as the Devils try to get a strong footing in this game and get themselves what we hope will be an early lead and their first of the series. Just like that, Halla on the power play goal on the doorstep. Shesterkin, puck sneaking through the crease on him. A power play opportunity, one for one in the game here are the New Jersey Devils. Something they weren't able to accomplish, obviously going back to four opportunities in game number one. You saw this, Halla actually had the face-off win across this power play. You had shots from the point. Danny talked about simplifying things. Make the crisp passes, put the puck on net, try to get deflections. Tatar was there on a previous opportunity as well. We talk about the Devils needing to continue to press. Their positioning on the offensive end of the ice has been much better this game, certainly much better on the power plays, staying in front of Shesterkin, disrupting his line of sight, and then ultimately working it down low, pulling it back out, closing seconds of the power play. They get home. They get their first lead of the series, and now up 1-0. We'll look to continue to close out this first period strong and build on a sense of momentum that we thought they could have if they they came out, skated hard, and played clean hockey. There's plenty to work on here, but a lead for your New Jersey Devils. End of the first period, the Devils maintained their lead 1-0 over the Rangers, but Bastion taking a bit of a, you know, not questionable in terms of the call, questionable in terms of his decision-making. Boarding penalty puts the Rangers back on the power play. VTech with 14 saves in that first period. What a great bounce back for him. We discussed the idea of so many players potentially just experiencing some of those nerves. We often look beyond the goaltender in that regard. Great job by him really anchoring this team because the Rangers do look dangerous when they're able to settle down into the offensive zone, and they have looked dangerous setting up on the power play. Still going to be a lot of time coming out of this first intermission. Another scrum breaks out there. This is everything you want in a Rangers-Devils rivalry at the rock kind of battle here. <laughs> what is going on guys danny with devil's puck luck podcast well to say the least that was probably the most frustrating game i've seen all year and been at all year um devil's fans probably were gone 10 minutes left in the third period all around a very bad game very bad game devils are kind of playing into what the rangers want them to do and unfortunately it looks like ruff is being out coached by gallant um, Devils are really losing all the battles, basically every aspect and every facet of the game. We were dominated. Special teams has been atrocious. Some questionable line changes coming in with Siegenthaler coming out and Smith coming in. 
I have a problem with Lindy Ruff saying he's a former Ranger, so he wanted him to play. Smith played well overall, took a bad penalty, borderline penalty. Wood is just trash. We, let's call a spade a spade here. Wood has been absolutely awful, and there's no reason for him to be dressed in Game 3. Changes need to come. You need to see Luke Hughes in the lineup, I think. You also need to see Lazar in the lineup. It was a rough game, you know, and we got to put it behind us, and unfortunately... We're down 2-0, but there's still a lot of hockey left, and we have to be positive about it and have to realize that this is a long series. And we're a team that's come back. We led the league in comeback wins this year. We had a franchise record in wins, points. We can't give up just because we had two horrific games. It's going to happen. Unfortunately, it's happening at the wrong time. Like Jack Hughes said in his post game, we're in a slump, and it's a terrible time to be in a slump. The Devils can't focus on playing a similar game to the Rangers. We aren't built like that. We're built to be a fast team, whereas the Rangers are built to be a physical, grinded-out type of team. And they made incredible acquisitions at the deadline, you know, getting Kane and Tarasenko. So they have that high-scoring ability, which we're seeing. We're seeing Kreider in front of the net on power plays constantly, and we need to just take him out. We need to level him in front of the net, clear our net. I thought Kevin Ball was doing a good job of it most of the game, but... Special teams has just been a joke, and unfortunately, we have to look back at these games, and now we have to adjust because we are down 10-2 to 2 in goals in two games. Rangers fans completely showed their colors at the game, you know, at Prudential Center. They stayed for the entire game, and they basically got all the Devils fans to leave early because their team dominated. There's no other way to say it. You know, one thing that really upset me was the fact that the refs decided very quickly, in snap of a finger, to throw everybody out on the BMW line. And our, pair, <clears throat> and our pairing of Ball and Smith because they were afraid that they were going to fight and things were going to get a little aggressive. Love McLeod stepping up and fighting Schneider at the end of the game. Playoff hockey is a different animal, right? It's about going into the next game. We were dominated in all facets of the game, but we want to show that fight. We want to show that we're not going to give up, you know? So I think that Wes McCauley being one of the refs and his crew threw the entire line out way too quickly. But listen, let's see what happens. Game three is coming up on Saturday. Devils still have a chance to get back in the series. Let's make it happen. Danny checking out. Adam and I are going to be jumping in soon to talk more post-game wise, and we're going to get you some previews of Saturday night's game. Have a good one.